Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at the Marshall Learner condition and how this relates to the J curve economic model. The Marshall Learner condition states that a, that a condition needs to be met in order for a devaluation of a currency to be effective in correcting a nation's current account deficit or trade deficit. And that condition is the sum of a country's price elasticity of demand for exports and imports must be greater than one. If that condition is met, then we can illustrate in the J-curve how there can be an improvement in the trade deficit. And that's what we're going to illustrate as well in this video. So first, let's understand why we need this condition of PED for imports and exports to be greater than one. Let's first start in the short run. And we're gonna assume that in the short run, the PED for imports and exports is inelastic. All right, let's make this assumption that the price elasticity of demand for imports plus the price elasticity of demand for exports is less than one. So the Marshall Learner condition is not being met. Let's see what happens here. So we can see that we have two fairly inelastic demand curves. Graph A is the price elasticity of demand for imports, and graph B is the price elasticity of demand for exports. And we have a price set at P1 with the quantity demanded at Q1 for those imports at point A, and we have a price set at P3 and a quantity demanded at Q3 at point C for exports. But the country decides to devalue they're gonna reduce the purchasing power of their currency in the foreign exchange market. So what's gonna be the impact on imports and exports, potentially in the short run? Well, if we devalue a currency, then imports become more expensive. Your currency has less purchasing power to buy other currencies. And so when you import from another nation, those imports become more expensive. This is a type of cost push inflation. So the price of imports rises due to the devaluation. We can state that it rises from P1 to P2 with the quantity demand decreases from Q1 to Q2. That's a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. Okay, so price elasticity of demand for imports, it's less than one because we can clearly see that the change in price is greater than the percent decrease in the quantity of demand. Percent change in price is greater than the percent change in the quantity demanded. We can also ex explain that the PED is inelastic in the short run because it takes time for people to switch away from those imports. Maybe these are key inputs or key outputs that are needed by this society, and there's no close alternative in the short run. So they will continue to buy those more expensive imports without seeing too much of a dramatic fall and the quantity demanded. What happens when you devalue your currency in terms of exports? Well, your exports become cheaper. So the price of those exports would fall, let's say from P3 to P4. With a quantity demanded increasing by four nations from Q3 to Q4. But again, we see that the price elasticity of demand for exports here in the short run is less than one because the percent decrease in price, that change is greater than the percent increase in the quantity demanded. Foreign nations are not able to immediately respond to buying those cheaper exports. It takes time for them to recognize that country A is providing a cheaper export and it takes time for foreign nations to switch to country A. In addition, you might have uh, other countries, maybe country B or C, that has a contract with another nation to buy their exports, and they're waiting for those contracts to expire before they can switch over to country A. So for those reasons, in the short run, the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports can be relatively inelastic, and thus the Marshall Learner condition is not met. The devaluation would actually worsen the trade deficit you're importing more expensive goods while exporting um, goods at a lower relative price.
but things begin to change in the long run. So now let's switch over to illustrating that. So we're going into the long run. And in the long run, we would expect that the demand for imports and exports to become more elastic. So we're going to illustrate a more elastic demand curve for imports and a more elastic demand curve for exports. We're going to label this D1 and D2. And we'll provide a price for imports at P1 here and price for exports, let's say, relatively over here. Okay, here we see the quantity demanded. So we have a price of P1, quantity demanded of Q1, price of P3, quantity demanded of Q3. We're looking at points A and let's say point C. So again, in the long run, you have weakened your currency, you've devalued it, but then uh, people begin to realize over the next few months that these imports are becoming very, very expensive and they find perhaps alternatives, cheaper alternatives within the, na the nation, perhaps from domestic producers. So it would be expected that in the long run, as a result of that devaluation and the rise in price of those imports, there'd be a significant decrease in the quantity demanded. So price rising from P1 to P2 we see a dramatic fall in the quantity demanded, right? Highlighting that it is elastic, right? So price rises, we see the percent change in price is less than the percent decrease in the quantity demanded. So here, the PED for imports is becoming greater than one, let's say. Percent change in price is now less than the percent change in the quantity demanded. People in this country, in country A, are switching over to domestic producers. They're no longer demanding the expensive imports. Okay, fine, so PEDM greater than one. Now let's take a look at the devaluation of the currency and its impact on exports. Well, over time, as the months pass, and perhaps contracts end, where let's say country B has finished their contract of buying the exports of country C, they can now look around and see which country is offering a cheaper alternative. And they notice that country A is offering cheaper exports and thus they will increase their demand buy more because it's simply cheaper. So the devaluation has reduced the price of these exports. In the long run, countries can respond. Price falls from P3 to P4, Quantity demanded increases significantly from Q3 uh, from Q3 to Q4. All right, so we see that decrease in the price, a dramatic increase in the quantity demanded. All right, thus highlighting that the price elasticity of demand for exports has become more elastic, where the percent change in price is less than the percent change in the quantity demanded. So here, the Marshall Lerner condition has been met. The sum of PEDM plus PEDX is now greater than one. So this condition's met, and we can now illustrate this uh, on a J-curve graph. So the J-curve effect is what we're gonna illustrate. And it's a fairly simple model to illustrate. We're gonna have a vertical line coming down and a horizontal line coming out as such, okay? And we're gonna label, here is zero, and that is where exports are equal to imports. So there's a trade balance. And above zero is a positive number so here we're seeing that exports are greater than imports, which would mean that the nation has a trade surplus. If it's less than zero, it's negative. So here we have exports less than imports, which would translate to a trade deficit. This nation is importing more 
than what they're exporting. And we can assume perhaps that we're looking at a country and they're at point A and they have decided to devalue their currency. And when they devalue their currency, they're hoping to correct this trade deficit that uh, in the hopes that in the long run, they will achieve the Marshall-Lerner condition. So again, the Marshall-Lerner condition, very important. If this condition is not met, then the devaluation will not correct the trade deficit. But if the Marshall-Lerner condition is met, where we have the sum of the PED for imports plus the PED for exports being greater than one, then it will correct the trade deficit. So how can we illustrate this? Well, remember when we devalued and we illustrate this, we were highlighting that the PED, perhaps let me just, uh, just highlight these notes. In the short run, we highlighted that you may not get a quick response from consumers for imports and exports. So the PED, let's assume for imports is less than one and the PED for exports is also less than one. And we saw that when you devalue your currency, your imports become more expensive and your exports become cheaper, but we don't see a lot of countries demanding those cheaper exports. It takes time for them to recognize it. But in the meantime, your imports become significantly more expensive. So that would be illustrated with a worsening trade deficit. On the J-curve, you've devalued your importing more costly goods, so the trade deficit gets worse. So let's say you go from point A to point B, and that's a worsening of the trade deficit. Okay, and this is occurring in the short run because, as we illustrated, the PEDM and the PEDX, let's assume, are less than one. But in the long run, we start to see that consumers within the nation are demanding less imports because they're simply too expensive and they find an alternative producer within their nation. So the demand for imports becomes more elastic. And we see that the demand for exports also becomes more elastic. Foreign nations, perhaps country B, C, D, acknowledge and see that country A is offering a cheaper export substitute and they begin to buy lots of it. So over time, the trade deficit improves. And so it rises slowly over time. Perhaps the country achieves a trade balance and potentially it can achieve a trade surplus. And we have effectively illustrated a J-curve. And we can show that at point C, it's achieved the trade surplus and perhaps at point D, it's achieved a trade surplus. So I will go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. Um, illustrated, we have a J-curve effect. Perhaps we will label it graph A for country A. And uh, on the vertical axes, we're looking at uh, exports to imports. And on the uh, horizontal axis, we're looking at time. Okay. Um, where exports equal imports, we have a trade balance. So we see the value of zero. And above zero, we're getting to a positive number. Thus, exports are greater than imports, meaning that there is a trade surplus. And a value below zero is negative. Thus, we are importing more than, we're, than what we are exporting. Thus, there is a trade deficit. We're going to assume that the country, country A, is at point A on the J-curve, meaning that they have a trade deficit. They're importing more than what they're exporting. And in their balance of payment, they have a current account deficit. So the country would like to correct this through a devaluation. They weaken their currency in the foreign exchange in the hopes that they'll be able to export more in the long run because they are providing a cheaper substitute in the international trade community. In the short run, the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports, the sum of them could potentially be less than one. And as a result, imports become more expensive. And yes, the exports are cheaper, but not as many nations are demanding them in the short run. So the trade deficit worsens as we see from point A to point B.
But in the long run, we see that the demand, the price elasticity of demand for imports becomes more elastic. Consumers within the nation demanding more domestically produced goods, thus demanding less imports. And other nations, foreign nations, seeing that country A is providing a cheaper export substitute are demanding more. So the PED for exports starts to become greater than one. Thus here, the Marshall Lerner condition is met where the sum of PEDM plus PEDX, if they are collectively greater than one, the trade deficit improves. And we see that improvement from point B to point C, the trade deficit gets smaller and smaller until it hits zero where there's a trade balance, exports are equal to imports, and it could potentially become uh, a trade surplus as they continue to export more than what they import due to the devaluation of their currency from point C to point D. And that is effectively it. That is the J-curve effect and how it relates to the Marshall learning condition. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.